here uh, this morning to uh, worship with us. And I uh, want to um, just take a few moments to explain uh, a little bit about what's going to happen today and uh, encourage you in this respect. Um, before the service even starts, uh, go out and get a palm branch. Yeah, I know. You don't live in Florida, so you may not have a palm branch. So go out and get a branch of some kind. I, partic- I have a white pine branch here. Go out and get one. We're going to have that as part of our response later in the service. So make sure that you have one of those. And also um, make sure you get for your family um, bread and the communion cup so that uh, you can uh, share in a time of communion with us. And um, it will be a great way to enhance uh, your worship service experience this morning. So let's talk a little bit about what's going to happen today. We're going to sing some songs and uh, then we're going to share the communion and uh, then give an opportunity for you to uh, help us um, with the offering and, uh, and worship the Lord in that way. Then I'm going to share a message that I believe that the Lord has given me for you uh, today on this uh, wonderful Palm Sunday when we join together with uh, multiplied millions of Christians around the globe to uh, remember and to commemorate the day when Jesus came into Jerusalem. And uh, then we'll have a time for response at the end where we'll uh, take our palm branches and put them into action and then a blessing as you go out. And so I want to welcome you today to uh, Revival Center Live and uh, just make sure that you're all ready for that. Um, Just so that we can make sure we've also covered our announcements so we don't need to do them a little bit later. Our announcements are very simple because this day is going to give you an opportunity uh, as well, and I want to invite you, those of you who have a sense uh, that maybe what we're dealing with in this hour is uh, as much spiritual, maybe more so, than it is uh, physical, um, we're going to be uh, joining with Chaplain Ed Gilbert at the Cadillac Rehab today. That's a building really right across the street from the hospital, and we're going to, in our own cars, we're going to begin praying uh, over our health care workers, and then we are going to make a processional around the city praying uh, for the people of our community. And uh, I want to invite you there. That is, you meet at the rehab at 3 o'clock uh, this afternoon, and um, I believe that prayer uh, changes things, and prayer makes the difference, and prayer can be that hedge of protection. Uh, through the years uh, in our community, there's been so many people who have interceded Uh, for this uh, county and for this city, and I believe that never before uh, have we ever seen a time when we needed to pray even more, and so we're going to be doing that. In fact, uh, uh, in Ephesians 5 and verse 15, it says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools. Now, circumspectly means accurately, with precision, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So we have an opportunity to redeem the time that we have right now. And uh, do we have Sunday afternoon? Absolutely we do. And it says, so therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Understanding the will of the Lord is uh, is wisdom. And so we're going to be doing that this afternoon at 3 o'clock. And then um, last and probably just as important um, is our, um, our announcement for next Sunday. Next Sunday at Revival Center Church here, we will have one service, and that service will be at 11 a.m., and uh, it will actually be a drive-in service. So you can drive up the driveway. We'll have folks that can um, help you know where to park. Uh, We'll make sure that you get uh, six feet away from the next nearest car, and uh, we're going to have an opportunity to worship together. Our worship team is going to be out on the front porch and uh, they're going to be leading out there with song. And, um, and so it's going to be a great, great Easter Sunday as we join together with, with uh, several billion uh, people around the world to celebrate uh, Easter uh, and so the Lord's resurrection. So plan on joining us uh, next Sunday. Uh, you may not have had an opportunity to be at church in a long time. You still can't come in. Um, and, and, and do this together thing that we love to do so much. But we are going to be together in the fact that we will be in our cars and we will be worshiping. And here's what I want you to do. If you hear something during that sermon that you really like, honk your horn as a sign of an amen, okay? And uh, we'll, we'll have a great time together next Sunday at 11. So if you're ready 
to worship the Lord this morning, we're going to start with a word of prayer, and we're going to worship the Lord together today. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. And Lord, we are going to lift up our, name, our, our voices to you. We're going to lift up our voices to you in your name in this place today and wherever we're at um, around this city and, and uh, around the world. We're going to lift up our voices and give you the hallelujah, the praise that you deserve today, the hosanna that you deserve today. And Lord, we, we just uh, say, Lord, be glorified in the praises of your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Let's join together and worship the Lord this morning. You are not alone if you are lonely when you feel afraid. You're not the only, we are all the same. In need of mercy to be forgiven and be free. It's all you got to lean on, but thank God it's all you need. And all the people said amen. Oh, and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. Oh, if you're rich or poor, it doesn't matter. Weak or strong, you know love is what we're after. We're all broken, but we're all in this together. God knows we stumble and fall. And he so loved the world, he sent his son to save us all. And all the people said amen. Whoa. Said, Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said, Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit who are torn apart. Blessed are the persecuted and the pure in heart. Blessed are the people hungry for another start. For this is the kingdom. Kingdom of God And all the people said amen whoa, 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 and all the people said amen Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends And all the people said amen And all the people said amen whoa, 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 and all said amen give thanks to the lord for his love never ends and all the people said amen give thanks to the lord for his love never ends and all the people said amen
your anthem, your renown. Fill the sky, we are here for you. We are here for you. Come on. Let your word move in power. Let what's dead. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are one desire. You alone.
weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When darkness falls, I know it won't prevail. Cause the God of serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. Cause a God is like it down from many giants. Cause I know how this story is. Yeah, I know how this story is. Victory, I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good Yes, you do You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. What the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take 
with the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good Whoa! You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good Yeah! You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good you turn it for good, yeah, yeah. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For oh, the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For oh, the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Yes, Lord Amen Thank you, Lord Oh, thank you, Lord
In the days of old, would you do it again? Do it again. All the stories told, all the miracles, would you do it again? Do it again. You said, consecrate yourselves to me. You will see amazing things. We need your revival, Holy Spirit fire, burning ever brighter in our souls. Kings and kingdoms falling, hear your people calling. King of kings, we need a miracle. There's a time to sow and a time to reap. Would you do it again? Do it again. Oh, there's a time to heal and a time to build. Would you do it again? Do it again. You said, consecrate yourselves to me. Oh, oh. You will see amazing things. We need your revival, Holy Spirit fire, burning ever brighter in our souls. King 
kings and kingdoms falling hear your people calling king of kings we need a miracle we need your revival holy spirit fire burning ever brighter in our souls kings and kingdoms falling hear your people calling king of kings we need a miracle you to um, prepare your hearts to receive the communion this morning, and um, what we do to prepare our hearts is we ask the Lord to forgive us of any sin that may be in our life, and uh, just to come inside of our hearts and to be with us, and so we're going to do that, and uh, if we do that, then we are prepared, because Jesus' blood washes away all sin, doesn't it? Amen. So wherever you're at, uh, get the bread and the grape juice ready and, um, and prepare to receive the communion with us today. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. And we thank you for the opportunity that we have to receive the communion today. We know, Lord, that it represents the price that you paid when you died on the cross. The fact that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes we were healed. I'm so thankful, Lord, for your word, and I'm so thankful for your love, and I'm so thankful for what you did when you died on the cross. And, Lord, we remember your broken body and your shed blood today. And we thank you, Lord, again for all that you paid for. And we pray that everyone that receives the bread and the cup today will receive everything you paid for. 
Lord, we pray that nothing will be withheld, but that everything you paid for will come into our lives this day. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, worship team. Great, great job again today. We so appreciate you being here to lead us in songs of praise um, on this um, wonderful Palm Sunday uh, celebration. And so we're very, very grateful uh, for that and, um, and uh, very, very thankful that we have that opportunity. At this uh, time, we're going to uh, take uh, an opportunity for you to uh, give of your tithes and offerings. If you're a person that gives um, digitally, um, you can uh, dial 810-202-0605. 810-202-0605. You can put the amount and the fund that you want it to go to, and um, it will uh, catch you up with a link there, and you'll be able to give your offerings that way. If you are mailing them in, to the church, uh, you can mail them to Cadillac Revival Center, and uh, that is at P.O. Box 667, Cadillac, Michigan, 49601. And so just Revival Center, uh, P.O. Box 667, Cadillac, Michigan, 49601. And uh, we appreciate your faithfulness um, in, in giving, and uh, people have really been doing a great job in being faithful in their giving, um, and we sure appreciate what you are doing and thank you so much for that. And so we want to give you that chance to give this morning. And Lord, we pray for your blessing upon everyone that gives an offering today. I pray, Lord, that those who are giving online or those who are uh, sending theirs in uh, uh, by check or in the mail or, or those that are giving it in person, I pray, Lord, that you will bless them. And I pray, Lord, that you will return unto them uh, those things that money can buy and those things that money can't buy. I pray that you will bless it back to them over and over again. And I thank you, Lord, that it will be more than enough to meet every need for each individual and for uh, the church. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Praise the Lord. God's so good, isn't he? I think I knocked my uh, palm branch off. I don't know how I did that, but I think I did, and I knocked my palm branch off on the ground, and that wasn't so good, And uh, but um, we want to uh, get it back up there because today is Palm Sunday. You know, whether people know it or not, there are literally probably right around 2 billion Christians around the world today that will be waving branches of all kinds, including pine branches. But palm branches uh, mostly uh, in different places. But I don't live in a place where palm trees grow unless it's inside. And so, um, so we have these um, uh, branches today that we are going to be celebrating. So um, if you um, were here at the beginning of our service, make sure um, that you get one of these uh, palm branches so that at the appropriate time in the service, we can make sure that we, um, we put them into, into practice, okay? And uh, so... Uh, this morning, we celebrate um, that time over 2,000 years ago when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on his journey to the cross. Now, I got to tell you, it's a glorious day, and I wish I had a time machine. Wouldn't that be cool to have a time machine? I, you know, I, I, I used to watch that movie, Back to the Future, and I thought to myself, wouldn't it be great to have a DeLorean, first of all, and then a DeLorean that would take you back in time or wherever you needed to go? I'm like going, whoa, that would be so cool. Because if today, if I had a time machine, I would go back in time to that day 2,000 years ago when those people welcome Jesus into Jerusalem. And so come with me, if you will, on a journey to Palestine for the very first Palm Sunday, okay? So I want you, if you will, I know that we don't have the time machine, so you have to use your imagination. Look at the person uh, near you and say, I've got an imagination and I will use it. All right, all right, I've got it and I will use it, okay. And so, um, so I want you to think about this. Here's, here's the situation. Jesus 
has been ministering in this region for three and a half years. He has been uh, building a resume, and uh, he, has, he has performed not just one miracle, but many miracles. I mean, Jesus has calmed the sea. He has fed 5,000. He then, later on, he fed 4,000. Jesus has, I mean, he has done some amazing things. He's healed the sick. He's healed the lame. He's, he's, he's opened blinded eyes. He has caused the deaf to hear. Jesus has done that. He even dealt with those who had leprosy. Leprosy was an incurable disease, and Jesus cleansed lepers. And so it's like no matter what the disease is, no matter what the problem is, no matter how big it seems, I want you to know something, Jesus is the healer. He was a healer then, and he's a healer today. And those people knew what he was. They, they had recognized. There were many that had heard about this one from Galilee. He had taught multitudes about the coming kingdom of God. And just a week prior to this, maybe one of the greatest miracles of all, the Bible says that Jesus had arrived at the home of Mary and Martha, and they had lost their brother Lazarus. Lazarus had been dead for four days. How many of you know dead for four days is dead? Right? He'd been dead for four days. In fact, in fact, at one point in time, they even said that his body stinks. So, so there was no embalming uh, of him, and he, his body stinks. And, uh, and, and Jesus had gone to that place, and he had said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus had come forth out of the tomb alive and well. How many of you know that's a great thing? It's both a raising from the dead and a healing, because whatever it was that Lazarus died from, he was healed at that very moment. So by the time Jesus got to Jerusalem, the crowd was primed. I mean, they were ready. The intensity level was at a fever pitch. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was not going to be just a casual stroll like you walking, taking a walk. Jesus' disciples and the crowd that day believed that Jesus was going into Jerusalem to make a declaration that he was the one predicted by the prophets many years ago, that he was the Messiah, that he was the next king of Israel. So it was not a small day. It was a day of great excitement as people were like going, you know what? Finally, we are going to get rid of the Romans who have dominated and hurt us and, and, and abused us and taxed us to death. We're going to get rid of them because Jesus is going to be our king. So if you will, join me this morning as we journey with Jesus through the ancient city of Jerusalem. Now, let's start early in the morning. How many of you wake up early? I'm an early riser. I get up early. I get up well before, before light, okay? I think some of the best time uh, is early, early in the morning. Others would say, no, 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 some of the best time is late, late at night. But I get up so early in the morning, it may feel like late at night to some people, okay? It's just like I love getting up early in the morning, and I really like seeing the sunrise. So think about it, if you will, this way. Here's how it starts. Jesus, Jesus is going to send two disciples, and they are going to get an animal for him to ride on. Now, here's the thing. Jesus had walked everywhere during this three and a half years. He had not ridden on anything. It wasn't any time that he had ever rode. But you know what? It's only fitting for the conquering king to come into Jerusalem riding a great big giant stallion, Right? Maybe, maybe, I mean, a great big giant one. That, that's what they're thinking in, the, in their hearts, you know. That would be great. Our conquering king, because only kings would, would ride like that. Our conquering king is going to come into Jerusalem. But his instructions to his disciples were not what they expected. How many of you know sometimes Jesus surprises us, right? And so here's what happens in Luke 19, 29. And it came to pass when he came near to Bethage, and, and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet that he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village opposite you where as you enter you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. In other words, this is a young colt, okay? So loose him and bring him here. And if anyone asks you why you are loosing it, thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. Wow, because the Lord has need of it. And so, so they're like going, well, you know, wait a minute. I don't, I don't know about you, but if I'd have been one of those disciples, I'd have had some questions going through my mind. I'd have been thinking to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's not sending us to get a giant stallion. He's sending us to get a baby 
cult. What in the world is going on? I don't even know who the disciples were. The Bible doesn't say who they were. It doesn't say even what they talked about. But if it had been me, I would have probably had some questions. I'd have been asking things like, I mean, as I'd have walked along with my friend, uh, six feet apart, I might add. <laughs> well, not in that day. Anyway, I would, I would have been asking my friend these questions like, y y you, th you think we're really just supposed to go there and untie the cold and take it? I mean, Jesus really isn't into theft, is he? I mean, you know, it's like, are we just supposed to take it? You really think that, that the, the owners of the colt are just going to let us walk away with their donkey? I mean, what if we get arrested? That would kind of ruin the day, right? It would kind of ruin the day if we get arrested. I don't remember Jesus uh, saying what we should do if we got arrested. And, and I... I think that conversation into town must have been kind of a, kind of, kind of a strange one. And, and can you imagine kind of like a final test? You think this is a test of some kind? You think it's possible that Jesus is testing us? Is it possible that, that, that he's doing that, that, it, that, that there's a test going on? Well, well, let me just take a minute to say that if you are like me, there are times when you read the Bible and it seems like kind of you're reading a play. You already, you've read it so many times, you already know the story and you know how it's going to end up, right? It, but, but, but they didn't know. These guys didn't know what was going to happen. No more than you or I know what's going to happen with our life. In fact, we all walk through life not knowing what the next breath will bring. We don't know. We don't know what the next moment will bring. We have no idea what that's going to be. So these disciples, whoever they were, had no idea what the day would bring, but they did know what Jesus had said. You see, Jesus had already prepared them. Verse 32 simply says this, So those who were sent went their way, and they found it just as he said to them. You know, only in retrospect... After Jesus was resurrected, did any of the disciples realize that they were playing a part in fulfilling the prophecy from Zechariah 9.9? In fact, the prophecy in Zechariah 9.9 says, Rejoice greatly. This is a prophecy given hundreds of years prior to this moment. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Isn't that amazing? Zechariah had said this stuff hundreds of years before. You know why? Because prophecy is history written in advance. In other words, when God says it, it's already said. It's going to happen, right? When God says it, it's already going to happen. Prophecy is, is history written in advance. God had foretold this day and their part in it hundreds of years prior. So check this out. They get there. They're, they're getting ready to, they see the donkey just like he said they would. Okay, they see the donkey, the, the little baby donkey. And But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, worst case scenario, right? Why are you loosing the colt? In other words, they had been caught red-handed. I mean, this really was a test. They had been caught red-handed. What will they do now? What response would they give? Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you, in, when you were in school, have ever been given what they called, at least back in the day, back in the day, they called it a pop quiz? Oh, man, a pop quiz does one of two things. It either strikes terror in your heart, okay, or you start thinking to yourself, all right, I can handle it. And you know why? Because easy is when you know the answers and hard is when you don't. Right? If you know the answers, you're like, oh, that's easy. How many of you have ever, ever watched Jeopardy and, 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 and you're watching Jeopardy and, and you're like going, they're going through these questions and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I know that one. I know that one. I, why don't they know the answer to that one? And you're like going, these people are so stupid. And then they ask another question and you're thinking, what in the world is the answer to that one? And I would imagine if they were looking at you, they'd say, you are so stupid. Because you see, if you know the answer, it's easy. And if you don't know the answer, it's hard hard, okay? It's really hard if you don't know the answer. But here's the thing. Jesus had already given them the answer. They're in this situation. Somebody says, what are you doing taking this colt? Jesus had already given the answer. And so when the disciples were confronted, they didn't have to think of an answer because he had already given them the answer. And so they just said what Jesus had told them to say. 
In fact, that verse says in verse 34, and they said, the Lord has need of him. I would imagine when Jesus told them that to begin with, they were wondering, is this really going to work? I mean, all we got to do is tell people who we don't know and we're taking their cold. All we got to do is, is say the Lord has, maybe they don't know who the Lord is. Maybe they've never met, what in the world is going to happen? But they just had to answer what Jesus had told them to say, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. All in all, I believe with all my heart that this is a good model for you and me. Think about it, if you will. We're going to go through some tests, aren't we? Some trials, some temptations, some problems. Maybe, maybe it's possible that we could do no better than to follow the example of those two disciples, who though they had no way to know what the future would hold and what their answer, a, actions would bring, they just simply observed and simply obeyed Jesus. Revival Center folks, we started 2020 in this very simple way. We started with what we call the Red Letter Challenge. In other words, we were going to take the first 40 days with our families and our friends, and we were going to say, you know what? In these first 40 days, we are going to focus on the things that Jesus said, not just reading them, but doing them. Doing what Jesus said. And, 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 and during the first 40, and it wasn't just a been there, done that, uh, bought the T-shirt experience. We were being given answers to the test we're now in. You see, Jesus didn't have us go through that because it was just a good way to spend 40 days. No, no, it was preparation. It was, like, it was like, let me give you the answers to the tests that you are facing. Let me show you what kind of things that you need to know. And, and, and if you remember, we talked about being, what that means. That sometimes we're, we're too busy as humans doing and we're not interested in a, being a human being. You know, Sometimes, sometimes what you need to do, sometimes you just need to sit alone for a minute and listen to the Lord. Just be. Other times, maybe you need to read the Word a little more. You know, folks, folks have more time now than they've ever had, or at least many of them do, unless they're in certain professions. They, they may have a little more time than what they, they're used to. Why, why, why not start? Why not say, you know what, How do I, what do I want my new normal to be? If my, I want my new normal to be uh, having a, a, a time of, of, of devotion with my family, then maybe this is a good time to start. If I want my new normal to be, then I'm going to spend a little more time. I'm going to open my day and, and close my day in, in praise and worship. Maybe this is a good time to start. But during those first 40 days, we learned all about being and what that meant and, 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 and having a, a time where we had a time of rest. And we learned about forgiving. How many of you know this is a great time to forgive people? It's a great time to forgive people. Couldn't be a better time to forgive than this one. And, and, and serving? Oh, my goodness. We learned about serving and how, how, how there was a time when we could reach out and, and help somebody else who's in need or, 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 or giving. We learned about giving uh, sacrificially and going into all the world and preaching the gospel. I can tell you this much. Jesus' commandment to go into all the world didn't stop a month ago. It continues on. Nothing that's happening now is a surprise to him. In fact, the truth of the matter is, is if, if you're wondering what to do in this hour of testing, the good news is it's an open book test. Open the book. Look at the red letters and see what Jesus had to say, and then do it. Go to the book, read the red letters again, and you'll find the answer that you have need of today. You see, when we obey Jesus, his kingdom comes and his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. So we've just got to do what Jesus said to do. So, so this week, determine to do what Jesus says. Say to somebody near you, or even if you're alone, just say it out loud. Do what Jesus says. Hmm. It's not complicated. It's simple, but it's not always easy. But do what Jesus says. Of course, I, I, I'm pretty sure your obedience won't involve a donkey this week. Maybe somebody who acts like a donkey. I don't know. But it won't involve a donkey this week. But only God knows what it will involve. Only God knows what he will require of you today or this week or this Easter. Is he calling you to a season of fasting? 
Is he encouraging you to start that family devotional? Is he asking you to forgive someone? Is he, is he, is he saying, I want you to help someone or give a gift sacrificially or invite someone to meet Jesus? What is he asking you to do? I don't know what God will speak to your heart this week, but I can say to you, whatever he says to do, do what Jesus says. Hmm. Does that sound good? Sounds like a good idea, right? So let's go on in the story a little farther. Do what Jesus says. Are you going to remember that for the end? Do what Jesus says. That's the first thing we need to learn from this story. In Luke 19, 36, it says, And as he went... Many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now, they knew a king when they saw one. i got to give them credit. They knew a king when they saw one, and they gave him praise. And as they rode uh, into town, the people let loose with joyous, exuberant praise. What does that look like, joyous, exuberant praise? Well, let me tell you a little story from my childhood. I grew up with a dad that was mostly deaf and not a great singer who went to church every Sunday, morning and night, and Wednesday too. That was what I grew up with. And so, my dad had this heart of worship, and, but he didn't sing very well. And so when they would sing, you know what he would do? I, I, I'll never forget seeing him, he would, he would kind of lean his neck back like this, he would open his mouth, and he would sing so loud. In fact, I think that, I think, I think that you could have heard him, it, you could have heard him above the band that was playing. And it was like, it was like and, and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I just wish Dad wouldn't sing this week. Can't we have all week where Dad doesn't sing? You know, and Dad's singing, he's singing so loud, and it sounds so bad. And, 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 and I, I grew up with this, okay? Now, you got to understand, I'm getting a dose of this three times a week, right? I'm getting a dose of this three times a week. And, and it wasn't as bad on the, on the, on the uh, fast songs because everybody sang those loud. But on the slow songs, oh, my goodness. He sang just as loud. He, and, he, and he sang like he didn't care what anybody else thought. And so, so I'm, I'm growing up with this. And I get to my teen years, and i got to tell you, it had become a real source of embarrassment, my dad singing like that. And one day, he's singing at the top of his lungs, just like he always does. And, and the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart, and he showed me my dad's heart. And then he showed me mine. You see, my dad knew how to worship. I just knew how to watch him and be embarrassed by him. And even despised what he was doing. And that day, I can tell you this much, I repented. And so if you wonder why, a lot of times, I'm the loudest person singing in a room. The truth of the matter is, is I really would like to be like my dad someday. Not just sing loud, but sing from the heart. With everything that's within me. Because the truth of the matter is, is that Jesus is worthy. He deserves uninhibited, unreserved, unlimited, unrestrained praise. He deserves it. He, it, it belongs to him. You know, and, and, and I look at that and, and I go, whoa, this is an incredible thing. So this week in preparation for Easter, I challenge you to one day this week, it could even be today, to find a time and, and, and a place and, 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 and go out and, in your backyard or, or in your, your living room or, or, or on your porch and, and just lift, put back your head and just lift your voice to Jesus and give him what he deserves. Give it from a heart that is grateful. And watch what God does through it. You may say, well, it's going to sound terrible. I don't, want to, I don't want to even hear myself. I want you to know something. Jesus wants to hear it. And he deserves it. 
and what a great thing can happen. So give Jesus what he deserves. Can, look at the person next to you and say, give Jesus what he deserves. That's really, really important to give him what he deserves. Now, something else happened on the ride into Jerusalem. Matthew didn't record it. Mark doesn't mention it. In fact, Luke is the only gospel writer who writes about it. But we don't want to miss it today because this is really important. Here's what happens. On that ride in, it says, Now as he drew near, he saw the city and he wept over it. didn't seem like a day for crying. It didn't seem like a day that crying was even appropriate. It seemed like a day for rejoicing. It seemed like a day for enjoying the benefits of all the hard work and prayer and dedication that Jesus had put into the last three and a half years, and his disciples had too. But you know what? That day, Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Hmm. He wept and he he cried, and here's the thing, it wasn't just a small cry. No, 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 it wasn't like that at all. In fact, fact, the the, the same word that, that, that is wept there is also the same word that talked about Mary and Martha as they cried over Lazarus. It's the same word that is used of Mary Magdalene when she cried at the tomb. It's the same word that's used when, when Peter, who had fa- failed the Lord in the, after the Garden of Gethsemane, it, it, it's, like, it's, like, it's like the same word. It's wept, and he wept bitter tears, and, and he wept. It's almost like a, a, a gut-wrenching, a, a heart-wrenching cry. It, it is not a small thing. It's a big thing, and Jesus wept over Jerusalem. And you know why he did? Because it's, he said to them, he says, you have missed or you could have had known your time, but because you did not know the time of your visitation, not one stone will be left on another. People sometimes say, I would like to feel what God feels. Not sure. Not sure we really want to feel that. But as Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. That place is marked today by a, by a, by a, a small uh, shrine, a little chapel called Dominus uh, Flevit. And it's, 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 it's like it's in the shape of a teardrop. And it's there, and people come there today to weep. And what a great thing to do, to weep, because you feel the heart of God. It's an incredible thing. You see, everyone that day was having a party except Jesus. He was filled with compassion for the lost sheep of Israel who didn't even know their own sad condition. And this week as you prepare for Easter, I want you to do the most difficult thing of all. I want you to pray to God that you will feel what Jesus feels. I think we would have greater compassion if we actually sensed the heart of God. Don't you? I think we'd have greater compassion for a lost and dying world. I think we'd have greater compassion for the pain and suffering that people are going through. You see, there are people in your life that need you to feel what Jesus feels. But I gotta warn you, if you pray that way, if you start asking God, help me to feel what you feel, if you let yourself feel what Jesus feels, it's going to bring a flood of compassion into your heart for a brother or a sister or a mother or a father or a close friend or a neighbor or a roommate. It's going to bring a flood of compassion that maybe wasn't there. Maybe it's even a casual acquaintance, and you're like, well, why do I feel so strongly about them? It's because you're feeling what Jesus feels. Maybe it's somebody who hasn't experienced the forgiveness and the deliverance and the peace and the freedom that comes from an experience with Jesus Christ. So I want you to say to yourself, Lord, help me feel what you feel. Hmm. Help me feel what you feel. 
Let's kind of wrap the story up just a little bit. Let's conclude it. Then we're going to take some action. The story concludes with these words found in Matthew 21, 10. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved. Hmm. All the city was moved saying, you know, who is this? So the multitude says, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Matthew reports that the city was moved. And he uses the word that we get our work, word seismic from, you know. In, in other words, there was, a, there was like this, this shift that was taking place. Because that word seismic is something that we refer to in, in regard to an earthquake, right? Some kind of shift was taking place. In other words, the city was being moved because people were worshiping Jesus, and he was coming to fulfill the very thing that he'd been sent to earth for. It was a seismic shift. And, 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 and I, it, whenever I uh, read that and think about that, I can tell you this much. What really comes to my mind is, is, is it possible that that will happen when you and I, the church in this city, begin to do what Jesus said and and give Jesus what he deserves and feel what Jesus feels is it possible that this whole region could be shaken with the power of God is that possible that revival could take place here is that is that a reasonable thing to think about this morning because in Acts 431 later on after Jesus has died after he has risen from the grave after he's ascended to heaven and after the Holy Spirit has come there's a time in Acts 431 where it says and when they had prayed the place where they were assembled together was shaken it's the same word seismic it was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the Word of God with boldness. Shaken. You know, there's a whole lot of shaking going on today. Everything that can be shook loose is being shook loose. Everything that people depended upon, counted upon, there's shaking taking place. But I wonder if during this shaking, there could be a move of God where people get on their face again and call upon the name of Jesus as their one and only answer. I think so. So how are we going to respond today? Well, I want our worship team to come back up. And I want you to pick up the branch that you have. And if you are watching us uh, today on Facebook, I want you to go to your front door and open the front door. Just open the front door. And then I want you to worship the Lord in your house on your street. Just worship the Lord there. You may even want to step out onto the front porch. Say, well, what if somebody sees me? Well, he's worthy of uninhibited praise, isn't he? He's worthy of uninhibited praise, right? He's worthy of it. And so I want you to take that branch, and I, and, and I want you, to, I want you to, to, to get ready to, to wave it before the Lord, okay? Wherever you're at all over this region, I want you to wave that branch. Now, worship team, I want you to lead us in that song, and we're going to do that, and we're going to respond in that particular way. And when we're done singing that song, we've got some more action to take, okay? So let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Let's go ahead. Wherever you're at, wave those palm branches. Wherever you're at. I don't have palm branches, but some people do. And uh, But I have a, yes, I, I, I have though a, a white pine branch. And I'm going to wave it to the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Yes. He's worthy to be praised. Young and old alike, wherever you're at, worship the Lord because He's worthy to be praised. Would you do it Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All the stories told, all the miracles, would you do it again? Yes. Do 
do it again, Lord. You said, consecrate yourselves to me. see amazing things we need your revival holy spirit fire burning ever brighter in our souls kings and kingdoms falling hear your people calling king of kings we need There's a time to sow and a time to reap. Would you do it again? Do it again. Oh, there's a time to heal and a time to build. Would you do it again? Do it again. You said, consecrate yourselves to me. Oh. Amazing things. We need your revival, Holy Spirit fire, burning ever brighter in our souls. Kings and kingdoms falling, hear your people calling. King of kings, we need a miracle. We need your you to put them in your window at your house. Can you do that? Put it in your window. You say, well, why would I put that in my window? It's a sign to you and a sign to your neighbors that you are welcoming Jesus in your home and in this city. So take it. Take it wherever you go and watch what Jesus does in your neighborhood and your community and and the last thing I want to encourage you in is this invite someone next week to our drive-in Easter service we're gonna have one service next Sunday on Easter Sunday we're gonna join several billion people around the globe in worshiping the risen King and Lord of Lords Jesus Christ 
We're going to have a drive-in service here so we can keep our six-foot social distancing. But if people can stay in their cars, we're going to bring the worship band right out onto the porch. And we're going to play and we're going to sing and we're going to preach. And we're going to watch what Jesus does. And if you don't feel like you can come here, invite somebody to watch on Facebook Live. Because we're going to carry it there too. And we're going to join many around the globe who are going to be declaring that Jesus is alive. Amen? Amen. So go out into the world and change the world in which you live and do what Jesus said. Do what he said and give him the praise, the uninhibited praise that he deserves. Do it. Give him the uninhibited praise that he deserves because he deserves every bit that you will give him. Give it to him. Praise his name. Lift his name wherever you go. Make sure people know that you love a risen Lord. Make sure people know that he is Lord in your life. And watch what he does this next week. And, and here's the thing. Don't forget. Don't forget to ask God to help you feel what Jesus feels and the compassion that he has for people. You'll be glad that you did. Go out and change the world in which you live. Worship team, go ahead and lead us in that song one more time, if you will. His glory surrounds us. His fire is falling as we see. Savior is for us. His love is victorious. And his love is victorious, and revival is rising in his name. The King is among us, and his glory surrounds us, and his fire is falling as we see. The Savior is for us, and his love is victorious, and revival is among us and his glory surrounds us and his fire is falling as we see the savior is for us and his love is victorious and revival is rising in his name Surrounds us and his fire is full.